Good afternoon. First of all, I want to thank John for inviting me to come on here today and just share some of my thoughts with you all during this interesting time we're living in of quarantine. I would venture to guess the majority of you all do not know who I am, and that's okay because we are new to your church. My wife Stephanie and myself have been coming probably regularly since October. We have loved the fellowship and have really, really enjoyed uh, getting to know you all through online. That may sound like a weird thing to say, but we get to hear people's hearts through their messages, through their comments online. And that's really neat to see and to hear. We cannot wait to get back together as a group so we can get to know you in person. But we want to thank you so much for making us feel welcome when we are there and for allowing us to jump in on the Zoom the other night and people just treating us like we were part of the family. And I know that's what John says and Christina says, and I think that's very true. Uh, I want to give you a little bit of background on myself. I was a practicing dentist for 30 years and retired. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about that. Um, and my wife is a school teacher and she's supposed to be retiring this year. So as you can imagine, this is an interesting way for her to finish her career. Uh, I'm a bivocational minister. I served on uh, as an interim pastor in Frankfort, Kentucky for 19 months. And that finished about a year and a half ago. What I wanted to talk to you today about is how God has spoken to me through this and through other times. I think we've all heard the statement before, don't just sit there, do something. Well, God, three different times in my life, has turned that upside down in only the way that God can. And he has said, don't just do something, sit there. And if you know me, or you will know me, I don't sit still well at all. And sometimes God has to make it so I will be still. And every time that has happened, the three times this has happened, God has spoken to me profoundly in my life. The first time I had back surgery in 2011, very, very severe back surgery. I was at home for about three weeks after the surgery and really was not allowed to do much of anything. So everyone had brought me books, which I'm not a big reader, but I thought, hey, maybe I'll read books. And everyone had brought me movies and I thought maybe I'll watch all kinds of movies. But what I ended up doing instead was two things. First, at that time, my children were still around the house some, not as much. Uh, they were growing up but I enjoyed seeing them and being around them. But God really started talking to me and really started moving in my life at that time. And what I didn't understand was I kept hearing at that time, it's time to change churches. Stephanie and I had been at the same church for 30 years. I had taught Sunday school class for the majority of those years, the same Sunday school class. So I couldn't figure out why God was telling me it was time to leave. But he kept on, he just kept on speaking those words over us. And finally, Steph and I talked about it. And we prayed about it and we decided that it was time to leave, that there was something else that God had in store for us. And we ended up at another church and that's the church that I ended up branching off of to serve as the interim pastor in Frankfurt. And had I not left my home church, I would have never had the ability to do that. The second time that happened was I ruptured my Achilles tendon in 2015. Stephanie will be the first to tell you that after I had my back surgery, I was told that I was not allowed to participate in almost any athletic event except for walking. So I had the great idea one night at a church picnic while Stephanie wasn't there, they were short one volleyball player. And I thought, what could it hurt to play volleyball? I'm not going to try to jump and spike the ball, although I probably would have. I wish I could have a great story, but I reached back to hit a ball and I felt a pop. 
and it was a ruptured Achilles tendon. Mine was a little bit different than a lot of people's. I was able to walk off the volleyball court, but I knew I had injured myself. I had surgery, and once again, there was a time where God made me still. And during that time, my life changed more than I could have ever imagined. God put on my heart that it was time for me to stop doing what I was doing. And at first, I just thought that was strictly dentistry. You see, I'm one of those dentists that, for whatever reason, I didn't make a million dollars doing dentistry. My practice was slowing down. I was slowing down. The money, honestly, was just not coming in. It was a terrible time. And I tried and I tried and I tried to keep the practice against God's will and God's saying to stop the practice. Well, to make a long story short, after that, we lost everything. The dental practice closed. We lost our house. Everything was taken away from us. But it was during that time of quietness with the ruptured Achilles tendon that God spoke these words to me, and I didn't understand them at the time. He said, Rick, would it be enough if you had me being God and Stephanie and you, would that be enough? I thought that was a strange question. But I said, yes, God, I think that'll be enough. And then he said something to me and I heard these words. He said, how are you going to prove it? And I didn't know what he meant, but through everything that happened, I didn't have to prove it because it happened. But I can tell you, we live in a two bedroom apartment after being in a 3,400 square foot house. And we've never been happier. I've never been a kinder person because of all the stuff I was trying to live through and live for before. So I wanted to give you a little background on my situation, on what has happened to me in these times of quietness. And I think we're all very familiar with Psalms 46.10 that says, Be still and know that I am God. But I love the message version, and I think this is what speaks so highly during this time of quarantine. It says, step out of the traffic, take a long, loving look at me, your high God, and listen to this, above politics and above everything. And then I wanted to read also for you in Matthew 6. Verse 7, it says this, And when you pray, do not keep babbling like pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. And you may think that's an odd thing for me, scripture for me to read. But what I want you to hear is what I have had to learn. And that is, when I pray, I need to not just talk, but I need to listen. Because God speaks. He speaks to different people in different ways. He wants us to be still. He wants us to take a loving look at him. And I'm going to be honest, folks. Being a pastor, that's embarrassing for me to say. But when I was serving in Frankfurt, there were times where I was too busy to look at him. I was doing everything I could for God but I wasn't worshiping God. I was just trying to do the next thing to keep everything going. So I had to think long and hard this time. I said, God, please speak to me. What are you wanting me to learn from this situation, from this time of quarantine? And there's a couple things that have come to me that he has spoken to. The first thing is, I told him when my dental practice closed, when we lost everything, I would do whatever he wanted me to do. For once in my life, whatever door he opened, I would walk through it. And I wouldn't ask any questions, which is so hard for me. I always want to know why. 
So the first thing he did was he opened the door. I, I ended up working at Keeneland as a greeter as I took people to their seats in wheelchairs. And I absolutely loved that. And then I worked for a nonprofit organization here in town called Lighthouse Ministries. And I went to restaurants and I picked up donations and I was able to preach there and I was able to love on people that some people would say are unlovable. And some of those people there thought they were unlovable. And I was able to love on them. And then God opened a door for me to work at Chick-fil-A. And that's what I'm doing now. But what happened was, when this started, Chick-fil-A kept on working. But Stephanie was very wise in the fact she is very cognizant of the virus. And we have aging parents. She was worried about me continuing to work. So I stopped work for 30 days. And I just sat with my son. And Stephanie's working harder than she ever has teaching. But God started to speak to me. And he started to show me that the relationship that I'm forming at work are relationships that he wants me to have. I'm reaching younger people. I'm reaching older people. I'm reaching customers that I never would have reached before. But one thing he showed me that surprised me. See, you have to know, as you can see in my shirt, I'm a UK sports aholic. I love everything UK does. And I watch, and I'm going to say this, I watch it religiously. And all of a sudden, the NCAA basketball tournament was canceled. I had planned my schedule around the SEC tournament. I couldn't wait to see the NCAA tournament. And you may think, why would God worry about that? Well, I know that God doesn't worry about who wins or loses. But I do know one thing. UK sports, sports in general, had become a religion to me. And the only way that God could make me see how important it was to me was to take it away from me. And I thank him for that. Because I don't think I'll ever watch a basketball or football game the same way again. I think I'm going to enjoy it more because it's there but it's really not life or death. I don't know what God has shown you through this quarantine. I don't know why he wanted you to be still and be quiet and look to him. But my hope and prayer is if you haven't taken that time yet, I pray that you will. I pray that you will listen to what he has to say. And I pray that in all things, And in all ways, you feel his love for you. Because you see, what he says to me is not what he says to you, because you and I are not the same people. But what he does say is that you are a beloved child of his. And through this, we're going to make it. We're going to make it out to the other side. There's a light at the end of the tunnel, and I always like to say, and I'm pretty pretty sure right now it's not a train, finally. We're going to make it out on the other side. My hope and my prayer is that we'll be better people on the other side of this, and that we'll get when we get back together at church, we'll enjoy our time together because of this. My hope and my prayer is that you will feel God's mighty, mighty presence, even in the scariest of times that you know that he's faithful to his word, that he'll never leave you and he'll never forsake you. And I'm thankful that he has slowed me down three times in my life to teach me such valuable lessons. I'm hoping I don't have to have any more, but I'm smart enough to know when I need to be readjusted, he will be there to readjust me. Thank you so much for your time today. God bless each and every one of you, and I can't wait to meet you in person when we get back together. Thanks again. Have a great rest of your day and rest of your week.